Good afternoon, and thank you for joining me for this time of sharing together, especially looking at what Scripture is teaching us during troubled times. And uh, we know if we read Scriptures, uh, this has been going on since the beginning of creation. So there is no difference today because we see the world in chaos and uh, we see the increase of evil and troubles in the world that we live in today. But we know that scripture has been telling us that all along. You know, we read about in the last days that there will be perilous time. There will be increased trouble, increased evil. As a matter of fact, the Lord even talks about if he does not shorten the days, even the elect of God will fall by the wayside. So this is nothing new and we should not be surprised because the Bible has been telling us all along. If we go to Romans 12 too, you know, the Bible said, do not be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. You know, His good, His pleasing will, perfect will. We need to renew our mind to kind of keep our mind away from what's going on in the world. We even read more in scripture from Philippians 2.13. It said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling because for it is God who works in us to will and to work for his good pleasure. See, many people think this scripture is like, uh, you know, get you afraid, but that's not what it is. You know, what this scripture is talking about is, you know, through the salvation, through Jesus Christ, we belong to God. You know, we are representative of the kingdom of God. So we need to have, you know, honor, respect, for the work God is doing in our life. That's why he said that we need to have the trembling fear, which is honor and respect the way we represent God. So the Bible has been telling us that. So today I wanna say, put a little title to this time of sharing. I wanna say, it is time to say, yes, Lord, yes. Because with the trouble in the world today, many people give up. Many people say there's nothing they can do. Unfortunately, the devil is gonna try and get you and I, the believers, to even do nothing. But this is a great opportunity for you and I to say, yes, Lord, yes. Yes, Lord, yes. So the greatest obstacle on our spiritual journey and our you know, serving God is us. You know, we cannot blame other people. We cannot blame the neighbors. We cannot blame even people coming to the church. We cannot blame, really blame the devil because the final choice, the final decision is you and I. We cannot point our finger somewhere else. You know, we gotta realize that our mind, our minds is a battlefield. Every day there's a war going on between the spirit and the flesh. It's all in our mind. And if we are not careful, we start to listen to the enemy and we start forgetting what God is saying. So our mind is a battlefield and we, we need to renew that mind daily if we're gonna have a victorious life. Remember that's what Romans 12, two said, renew our mind. If not, you know, we end up conforming to the pattern of this world. And it's happening church, it's happening everywhere. So we need to be careful. So with what's happening in the world today, we can easily say if we continue to listen and not pay attention to what the Bible, we can say, well, it is so bad. There is no hope. Or we can say, well, you know, I'm just one person. So what difference can I make? Well, I'm here to tell you that is why the world is like this today and what's happening in the church world today, you know, it is fulfillment of scriptures because the church became silent. They give in to the pressure from the world for political correctness, the pressure from the masses, you know, don't ruffle the feathers, don't do this, don't do that. And that's why 
the church became silent. And very unfortunate today that many of the people who profess to be Christian are being very afraid of the world and therefore they conform to the pattern of this world. And that is not what scripture says. Only the truth can set us free and there's only one truth, the universal truth. The truth, God is truth. The word of God is truth. You know, the world been searching for truth all this time. They will never find it because there is no truth in the world. The only truth is Jesus said, you know, God is truth. I was born to testify to the truth of God. So there, there it is, you know, but we're looking somewhere else. And then we are being intimidated by the world. But with all that, you know, you and I probably sense God calling in our life, you know, to be used to serve him. But so many times we are afraid to enter. Now, why are we afraid? God is not the author of fear. Where does fear come from? From the devil, from Satan. And that's because we allow him to speak that to us repeatedly. And sooner or later, because, you know, research say when we hear something so often, we start to believe, even if it's a lie. And that's what the enemy, he will make sure that he's the loudest voice to keep us from serving God, to keep us from, you know, surrendering so God can use us. Because we got to be mindful. Fear is the lie of the enemy, not from God. So let us seek God in prayer for this year, 2021, and into the future for opportunities to be used for his glory. And God has a, a plan for each of us. He has given us a talent. So let us use it and not be afraid. We need to make ourselves available. God will make us able. I can say to you and myself, of our own, we can't do anything. But we got to be mindful. God, make a way for us. His scripture said that we can do all things through Christ who gives us the strength. That's the one that we can do all these things is through Christ. So we need not be afraid. Make ourselves available. God will make us able. You know, we're not near, we're the only one that's afraid. No, even, even in the scriptures, long time back in, you know, Moses, you know, God called Moses and said, go to Egypt and rescue my people. Take my people out of slavery there. And what did Moses do? Boy, he started numbering up all the reason why he can't go. Doesn't sound like you and me. We already got reason. You know why? Because we're looking at our ability. But remember, that is not what God is looking for. He's looking for us to be available. He will make us able. Because if we read the story of Moses, you know, God was very clear. He did not leave him, like, figure it out. He said, go. And if they ask you who sent you, you tell them, I am, I am, I am, I am the Lord who sent you. See, that was a very, very clear. And that will be the same thing for you and I. We just need to pray, obey, and trust God. Make ourselves available. He will, and he will give us the strength. He will make a way where there seems to be no way encouraging for this year for us to serve our Lord. Times like now should be great opportunity to draw closer to God, to say to God, Lord, if you can use anyone, you can use me. God has a, has a plan for our life. You know what? He's looking for those who really love him, that he can be vessels of honor for his kingdom. This is the time to draw closer to God. This is not a time to neglect God or run from God. You know, that's the, that's the human reaction, run. You know, we read that in scripture, even in scripture, people, you know, we hear the story of Jonah. God told Jonah to go to the city of Nineveh and preach repentance. And what happened to Jonah? He took off on a ship going the other way. You know, when I was in Israel, you know, in Israel, in Tel Aviv, Pastor Avi, he was taking us on a tour and he was showing places and he said, this is where Jonah ran to, you know. But, you know, we do the same thing. Instead of drawing closer to God, we run away from God. 
But you and I remember the story of Jonah. You know, when you run away from God, things happen to you, even though there's a lot of teaching about for us in that story. But wow, he ended up in the belly of a whale for three nights, and that is not a good smelling. I don't think so, you know. But it will happen to you and I. We can run away from God, you know, but if we really love him, pray, we probably will end up coming back and ask the Lord, forgive us. Yes, Lord, I will trust you and obey. And we all know the story of Jonah. He came back and he followed the call of God and he go and preach repentance to people who need to hear salvation. So we cannot run away. Time to be closer to God. You know, be encouraged that God's plan for our lives has a greater purpose. You know, we really don't understand God. We need to trust him and embrace the privilege and an honor to serve him, to be used for his kingdom. You know, we need to know that it is up to God because if we do that and trust God, the result is a lot more than we can comprehend. You know, I, I look at the story to kind of illustrate that, the story of Joseph. You know, Joseph, he had dream about his relationship with God. And he, you know, the Lord is so good. But look at what happened to him. Not only he was sold as a slave, but he was sold by his own, you know, his, his own brothers. Now, you and I, I don't think we, we're going to face that. But just look at what happened to Joseph because he had a relationship with God. He didn't understand all this stuff, but he trusted his God. He was in the place where his, his allegiance to his Lord, his love for God was tested. And you know what? He passed every test because God was always with him. Do the same thing for you and me. Even in the hour or the time of temptation, you know, he passed that test with no problem because he cares more about his Lord. He honored his Lord and therefore temptation cannot rule over his life because of his love for God. But let's look at the reward that I don't think, you know, Joseph really know all about what's going to happen because of what he has done and his love for God. First, he was elevated to be second in command in the nation. Wow. From being a boy that was, you know, bought as a slave, became second in command. The other thing is you and I know if our brothers would, you know, sold us like that, we probably will hopper that anger against them forever. But you know what? Listen to the scripture. He had such joy in his heart to forgive his brothers. Wow, amazing. And most important, for the right time at the right place, for such a time as this. I don't think Joseph knew about it, but he was right where God wants him during the greatest famine in the land. And the nation of Israel, they need help. And he was there. We got to trust God. He knows more about our life. His plan for our lives more than we can understand. You know, Jeremiah 29, 11 is a good scripture to remember. God has a plan for you and me. That he will prosper us. He will not harm us. He will, we will have a good future if we trust in God. Amen. Hallelujah to that. You know, so let us seek God in prayer for opportunity to use service for his kingdom. And let us ask him for his spirit to lead and guide us. Remember, we can do all things through Christ. The spirit of God, when he's inside us, the enemy is not going to win. We will overcome through the word of our testimonies and the blood of Christ. And that will re the spirit will guide us and lead us in all endeavors. And he will remove the fear of serving God. We trust God for his purpose. We surrender to his will and to his way. We will not be afraid. You know, we will say, yes, Lord, you can use anyone. You can use me. As simple as I am, but I'm putting my trust in you because I know I'm making myself available. I'm answering the call, but you will make a way where there seems to be no way. So when that spirit is in us and our trust is in God with, you know, that's the truth. And the truth will set us free. We will not be afraid because we're trusting in the one who is more than enough, who is all sufficient in every way. And the last that I share that illustrate that is the story of David, the shepherd boy. 
See, here it is, the greatest nation in the land. They are the apple of God's eye. He called them by name, you know, his people. And what was happening here, they were opposite a pagan nation. And what was happening to the king of Israel and all the people, they were trembling in fear because this nation brought forth their, their giant and he's standing there, you know, and he is daunting the people of God day and night because of his size and the weapons and everything. They were afraid. But there's the little boy, David, the shepherd. He already know. He already know because God deliver him, protect him while he is out there guarding the sheep. You know what? When he came and because the spirit of the Lord is leading and guiding him, there is boldness. There is, is no fear, not afraid, doesn't matter. And he came and he told the king and the people that I will go against him. And they look at his side. See, that's what happened to us so many times. We look at what's around. We look at the ability of the people and our ability, our capability and all them. And we make a decision. But there, when we are led by the spirit of God, well, listen to what David said. He said, you come to me with the spear, the sword and all that armory around you. You know, I was thinking about that. With all that armory, he can't even chase, you know. If you take five steps, he probably will try and take two and never make it because it's so heavy. But David see that and he said, oh, no, you come to me with all that, it's useless because I come to you in the name of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord, the king of Israel, who you are defined today. And then listen to the rest of what he said and he said, Today, my God will deliver you into my hand. See, you and I got to think about that. With God on our side, who can be against us? You know, the enemy is a liar, he's fake. David knew exactly that his God will not fail and will deliver. And then some people say that, uh, you know, I don't know if it's true, but they say that Goliath, the last thing that, that he remember was something went through his mind or his head. Well, that's what dropped him. So you and I, 2021 should be the year that don't let the pandemic and all this, uh, you know, the enemy is gonna put fear and all them so we can stay idle, not get involved. You know, oh, everything, let's tremble. That is not the people of God. You know what? This is the greatest opportunity for you and I <clears throat> excuse me, to show the world, to rejoice in our God, to sing about the goodness of our Lord, not be silent, not be ashamed. There is no shame in Jesus. You know what? One of the greatest things that I remember when I was in Israel is we go to Pastor Avi's church or even in a place where the Jewish people are those that receive Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah. There is such a joy in their heart. There is a genuine love for God in their worship that you cannot help but feel the spirit of God in those services. It lifts you up because they care less about anything else. They are there to worship, lift their hands. You know, why do they lift their hands? Because the Bible said so. You know, today we see so much of that going to the world and yet the people of God they go to church and they, like, they are intimidated. Yeah, don't, that is some, no, 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 no. You know what? Yeah, I remember pastor, you know, preaching. They said, we got to sing about the goodness of God. We got to worship him with everything. We got to rejoice. We got to raise our hand. We got to let the world know that this is the greatest thing in our life is God. It's not what we have in materials or anything else. And when we come into the house of God, we need to come to worship him, lift up our hands, sing praises to him. He is worthy of all that church. So we, should, we, we don't need to be a silent church. You know, go in some of the church, oh my goodness, it's like they're just there and not happy. No, we need to raise our hands, sing praises to our God, 
and all that. You know what? He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy of all the honor, all the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to close with this. I remember this. Uh, that we sing at the church all the time. Well, even when I go to places, I still sing this song because it means a lot. And it means a lot to the God that cares for you and I. Well, I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. Well, I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yeah. Well, I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. Well, I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I agree, and my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time of sharing. With all the trouble in the world, Father, I pray that help us take our eyes off the world and set our eyes on you. Oh God, we know the enemy want to deceive us and keep us from being used for your glory. But what a golden opportunity for us to seek you, Lord, to serve you, to be vessels of honor. For it is a privilege and an honor to serve you, God. I pray, Lord, for those that will listen to this share, including myself. Help us, Lord God that we will continue to pray and say, Lord God, pray that you will open the doors where you can use me. I have no ability, but you are my ability. You are my capability. I am just available to be a servant for the kingdom. Nothing greater today, Lord, than serving you, even with all the chaos and the trouble in the world. Help us, the people of God, that we will see the importance, the joy, the honor, and the privilege to be used for your glory. Oh God, throughout this week, anything that we have said, or our thoughts, our shortcomings, that was not pleasing, we ask that you will forgive us, Lord. Father, we thank you. We love you. For Lord, in the name of Jesus, we give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. For in his precious name, pray. Amen.